Mining update, lesson about the industry and job hunt video. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters and in today's video we're going to update the prices. The lesson is about are you being set up to fail if you are a new starter looking to get into the industry. Because the reason I say that and the reason I want to talk about this again is that a lot of people selling guides from overseas that telling you how to get a job in the mining industry a lot of the information is all pretty useless now because of what's happened in the mining industry with the changes to the um, prices in nickel and lithium and the downturn in some of the bigger mining companies that have led them to mothball their um, some of their iron ore sites and some of their coal sites and that sort of stuff it's made a huge difference to the way the industry's going and it's really important that you understand where the jobs are right now who's looking for people and who isn't because otherwise you're just gonna waste a whole heap of time and money chasing a job that doesn't really exist at the moment so first off let's have a look at the prices oh yeah and we'll also do a job hunt video at the end and we've got a few different titles to look at today i just won't concentrate on the underground i'll have a look at a few of the other ones as well but to start with let's have a look at the prices and the gold price has just slipped under four thousand dollars an ounce australian it'll still cost you more than four grand if you go down to the perth mint and try and buy it i looked it up before and a um an ounce of gold is going to cost you a bit over four thousand one hundred and sixty dollars at the perth mint at the moment so it's still riding pretty high or off its off its highs i think it got up as high as 4200 at one stage it's come down a little bit because of the u.s election but it'll probably bounce around again and head back up uh, because the central banks around the world are continuing to buy gold uh, the copper price has come down under fourteen hundred fourteen thousand dollars an ounce as well it's thirteen thousand eight hundred and eighty nine dollars but that's still a really strong price so all the mines will be looking for people uh, the coal price is one hundred and twenty two dollars a ton us which is holding its own which is good so hopefully that will stay there and go a little bit higher and the iron ore price is just holding steady at about a hundred hundred dollars a ton us and they're all really good price that's a really good price and everybody's still making money but the way the iron ore companies are making money is by automating everything and reducing their wages bill by sending all the surface trucks driverless that they can so that's the big way that they're saving money that might bounce up and down depending on what's going to happen in the world in the next few months with the change of um, election around the world and all that sort of stuff so we'll have to see what happens there but first off I just want to um, talk about the lesson um, I want to go to our mining flow chart and um, the reason that we made this picture is because it's um, it really gives you the stream so you can have a look at where all the jobs are and which stream that you're going into now these three streams on the end mining construction mining shutdown and utilities when all the um, people that are writing these guides, the Irish guys that have come over from overseas 12 months ago came in, these two columns here were chock-a-block full of jobs and you literally just needed a heartbeat to get a job. And that's while everything was running hot. That nickel was running hot, gold was running hot, lithium was running hot, everything was running hot when all when all this was happening and these guys were getting jobs. The problem with what they're doing at the moment is that all that's called about six months ago when the nickel price tanked and the lithium price tanked and a couple of the big iron ore mines over here in WA got put into care and maintenance because it was just costing them too much to produce and yeah when you get take that amount of work out of the industry it really affects these two columns because these two columns it's the everything in the industry when you jump over to the production mining jobs if your nickel job shuts down you just go to a gold mine if your um, lithium um, mine shuts down you just go to a copper mine the skills are all a hundred percent transferable when your lithium mine shuts down here in um and a utility or a mining shutdown or a nickel mine shuts down like Nickel West did, there's not that you've still got all the people that were doing the, the gold stuff and working on the gold mines as well. And you, you don't have a job to be replaced into because all those jobs or a lot of those jobs were f um, filled before. Now over here, because gold's going crazy and there's more gold mines opening up and more copper mines opening up, there's a gap 
for these people off the lithium and um, nickel mines with that experience in the production mining stuff just to jump straight across. That doesn't always happen. If gold was treading water and back at $2,000 an ounce and not up at $4,000 an ounce, all those people that lost their jobs off the nickel and lithium mining, the production mining jobs, they'd all be struggling to find work. But because gold's through the roof and you know there's lots of mines opening up and there's lots of stuff going on and they're just trying to ramp up production, there's lots of all these people that were on those lithium mines and working for Nickel West and all those places, they've all walked straight into jobs. And, you know, and honestly, it hasn't even hit the sides. They're still looking for entry level people. That's how m many people that they need. Whereas over this side, all that um, Nickel West shutting down, all that's done is shrink the shutdown circuit significantly. You know, shutting all those nickel sites down and lithium sites down, it's just put a whole heap of staff out of work. And there are probably would be a few little jobs on the, the gold mines around the place where they can replace them, but it's not going to be, there's going to be a lot of people looking for work. And that's what's going on at the moment. We get emails all the time from people looking for TA jobs on shutdown jobs. We get a lot of chefs looking for work at the moment. A lot of people that have been doing clean jobs looking for work at the moment it's just is what it is when the industry as a whole takes a big contraction in a, in a couple of areas of the industry then the jobs get hit and that's what's happening at the moment so if you're looking to get a utility job or a shutdown job you know you're probably wasting your money at the moment you need to wait until the um, industry starts running hot again as a whole if you still want to get into the industry then there's lots of jobs in the production mining side of things as drillers offsiders as nippers as truck drivers um, yeah paste fill you can get on as store lab tech sampler there's there's a whole heap of jobs that you can um, get on in this production mining side of things and work your way up but all those jobs are going to be available on co uh, sorry on copper and gold mines at the moment um, that's where you want to be targeting your stuff so i just wanted to talk about that and here's where all the gold mines and copper mines are around the country i just wanted to talk about that as the, the lesson because unfortunately there's a lot of people buying into this um, pathway into the industry and at the moment that only leads to a handful of jobs the ironic thing is that where they actually need people and they need bums in seats and they've got to hire entry-level people is the actual mining jobs the actual production mining jobs is where they need people where you know someone getting into the industry would think that they'd get their foot in the door as a utility worker or a shutdown worker because of the way things are panned out with lithium and nickel they don't need anybody there at the moment they've got an oversupply of experienced people in that area what they really need and where they need bums in seats is underground trucks nippering off siding diamond drill rigs underground and even off siding on the surface if you like camping but that's what's going on i just get frustrated at times where you see a whole heap of people that have written books after they've got a service person job and you know really with as far as their mining experience goes it's just pumping grease into a machine there's no actual practical mining experience there really um yeah you just came in when the industry was really hot and anybody with a heartbeat was getting a job and now all that's been turned on their head and if you're charging people money for that advice you know you, you, you're ripping them off because it's not not the right advice it's all changed it's all been turned on its head and we're just going to go and have a look at some job ads just sort of to prove it because you know 12 months ago these pages that we're going to look at would have been full of surface truck driving jobs they would have been full of ta jobs they would have been full of utility jobs there have been lots and lots of jobs all you know pages upon pages and pages of them now when you look at it um, unless you're looking in the underground section um, there's only a handful of um, the other jobs that I was talking about unfortunately so let's have a look at the underground one to start with and you can see right from the go there's a nipper job a truck job nipper and truck entry level truck truck operator everybody's looking for truck drivers they all need bums in seats everybody wants experienced truck drivers because they don't want to have the pain in the ass of training them because they go through a lot of them so you know if you want to be a point of difference learn how the mine works because the problem that the employers have with their truck drivers isn't teaching you how to drive one of these underground trucks that's really easy only takes a couple of weeks what everybody struggles with is learning enough so you can be left alone so gold fields got an ad here truck driver underground diamond drillers 
Red Path are opening up the new um, the old Bullen line in Norseman. I, I actually had spent a bit of time down in Bullen when I was living in Norseman um, 20 years ago. So they're pretty good rosters, two and two or two and one. So service crew as well. Um, West Gold, underground service person. They're just, everybody's looking for everything and they're trying to get anybody with any experience that they can because when they get inexperienced people in, it, it costs them a lot of money because they go through a lot of them. Because like I said, you know, the longer it takes for you to find your feet, the bigger the chance is that you're going to fail. And there's, you know, Goldfields again, and that's an ad from not too long ago. And all these ads, if they're up for 18 days, it just means that they've hired people and they've already gone through some and they just leave the ads up now and you just keep applying. If you see an ad that's been up for 18 days and you're looking at it for the first time, you should apply to it. So you get the point. There's lots of jobs. This is where all the jobs are. And now if we sort of go over to the surface side of things, and like I said, 12 months ago when all these Irish guys were writing their books and all that sort of stuff, all this would have been filled with um, drillers offsiders on the surface, truck driving jobs, all that sort of stuff. Now it's just a few drillers offsiders jobs on the surface, few part-time truck driving jobs, a few processing jobs, drillers offsider. There's just no, this used to be full of truck driving jobs. It's not anymore because of what's happened in the industry. And it's the same when you come over and you do mining truck drivers. Again, you know, um, 18 months ago, this would have been full of road train driving jobs. Or 12 months ago, it would have been full of road train driving jobs. But the big iron ore mine that used all the road trains got put into care and maintenance. And now nobody needs anybody. So you see the mining, a lot of it's underground. There's a bit of it that's open pit. So Glencore, that's an open pit one out of Northern Territory. Um, Hillgrove, truck drivers, they want experience only, but yeah, chances of you getting an experienced person that's actually you know any good at their job and not just dead wood is pretty rare. And that's why everybody gets stuck with having to train people again if you want good people coming through. Uh, you've got your dump truck operator with Norton Gold. That'll be Kalgoorlie based. Um, that'll be a surface job, but that'll be Cal they want you to live in Kalgoorlie. Underground, underground, underground. Truck driving trainee, Northern Star, North, that's Kalgoorlie as well, haul truck. Yeah, so you get the point. Um, a lot of these things were, um, you know, it'd be a lot more of these um, ent entry level and there'd be a lot of traineeship driving through here. You don't see the traineeships either anymore because they just don't need the people. Um, Diamond Driller Offsider, this is where they need people, so there's lots of jobs and you can see they're everywhere both surface and underground. The big difference between the surface and the underground is the underground, you get to stay in the camp. On the surface, you'll, um, and you won't, the underground, you only need a manual car license. On the surface, they want you to, ha want you to have a HR license to drive the drill rig truck and the other support vehicles that go with it. Um, but the other thing with working on the surface is that you're not always in a camp. Often that you have just stuck with a caravan and the drillers offsider are, is in charge of cooking meals and doing all that sort of stuff as well. So uh, that's why I tell everybody, if you wanna go on the surface, you have gotta like camping. Then if we move into the utility fly, FIFO, so that'll be the minimum there, the 90, but that'll be two and one. So that's what people are sort of getting paid with the one and one with the truck driving jobs. Uh, but yeah, it, it is what it is. It's, you get stuck driving a bus. You're not gonna actually learn any skills. They're gonna lead that lead you to jump from this, this column here as a bus driver over into this column here. You still need to make a friend and get over the poaching rules and still get over there because everything that happens on the mine site, yeah, you, you, it all happens on the mine site. Bus drivers don't see any of it. So a lot of people will look at this as a good job, but unfortunately I just look at this as that's gonna be your, your, your wage probably and that's gonna be the wage that you're stuck on for however long that you're doing this job. And it's the same as you go down. It's, you know, see so starting, that's 65. You know, up to 100. You know, when they say up to 100, they'll probably end up offering you 80. Um, it's just the way these companies work. But again, they, you know, have got a few people to choose from at the moment. So a lot of the ads have gone back and a lot of the money's come down. See, so you, you full-time, two and one, six, you know, 75,000. It's just a bit over, it's 20... 25 bucks an hour or $25.30, something like that. It's just, yeah, it's ridiculous the amount of money that they just want to pay people for these 
these utility jobs. And again, I go back to the um, the chart. The reason that people in this column get um, paid so little is because of the poaching rules. It's, it's really hard to make the jump from this column over to this column on the, on the mine site that you're working on. Because normally there's a rule that says if you go from one company to another, so you leave the utility company and go to the production mining company, you have to go off site for six months before you can come back on site with a new company. And when you do stuff like that, it just you know it, it just leaves you dead so that's the way that one works and the last one that i wanted to have a look at was the mining trade assistant role and i suppose having a look at this you know you, you'll see you know 45 dollars or 42 dollars an hour um there's a few that are up around 50 dollars an hour but there's a lot that are in the low 30s and that's because they've got the oversupply of people so it's 32 to 37 you know, the work's just not there, unfortunately. It, it just is what it is. I'm not sure why the nipper job's been thrown into with the trade assistant because the nipper is not a trade assistant role. It's nothing like the two. And anybody that's telling you that, so anybody that's selling these um, $30 mining guide specials that are telling you that a, um, a training guide is, um, sorry, a TA is a nipper's job, they just, you know, they're just full of shit and they don't know what they're talking about and they're not helping you because that flags everybody. If you start telling, um, if you start talking to a foreman in an interview about how you want to be a trade assistant underground, you know, you're just going to get a quizzical look because we don't really use those people underground. Or if you think that the nipper job's a trade assistant job, it's not, it's a nipper's job. It just is what it is. Yeah, I find it frustrating. There's no bigger red flag for the mining employers than people using the wrong terms because not only have they been um, done the research and got the wrong end of the stick, which isn't a good sign for an employee to start with, um, you, if you did hire somebody like that, you'd have to re-educate them. And re-educating somebody can be a pain in the ass and it's hard and it's complicated. You much better getting somebody that knows how it all works or if you can't find somebody that knows how it all works get a blank canvas that you can start from from scratch rather than having to re-educate people like um yeah like they have to with a lot of people that buy these guides at the moment unfortunately so this is our wall of fame page that we bring up the reason that i bring this up is that daniel sent me a message a little while ago telling me that, that the guys that he started with the three guys that he started with um a month ago he's the only one that's left and that just pretty much sums up what's going on and for a lot of them from what i understand it wasn't just a physical thing it was the job it wasn't what it th they thought it was um, they thought it was going to be a lot different and you know going in knowing exactly what the job is makes a huge difference if you actually you know want to succeed in the industry and the easiest way to do that is to do one of the training packages that we've got the DIY the three-step plan or the work ready all of them use the online training to teach you how it all works the more you know the easier it becomes and it, the foreman needs to look at you so they can say okay this person knows all the terms they know what a, a truck is what a jumbo is you know um, all that sort of wonderful stuff what a heading and what a stope is stench gas you know they've studied they know what everything is and that means all I have to do is teach them how to drive a truck and then I get a productive member of crew and that's how um, Kerry got his job if you um, want to have a look at this, you can click on um, Kerry's story there. It's a really good one. He came across from New South Wales in his mid-60s and got a two-in-one truck driving job with Burncut. Um, great story. And you can do it yourself as well. There's nothing stopping you educating yourself to how it all works and um, coming over in, or getting yourself a job anywhere in any of these mines around the country. There's a lot of work going in New South Wales. There's a lot of work going up in the middle, of, up in the top of New, uh, Queensland that's fly and fly out of Brisbane and Townsville. Um, there's a fair bit of work in um, Tasmania. There's a little bit of work in Victoria, lots in um, South Australia with all the big copper mines that's where a lot of the world's copper comes from and um, yeah you've got all the gold mines in WA that are all just screaming for people reopening opening mold ones back up again yeah there's a lot of work around at the moment if you're looking in the right area and that's the thing that people just aren't looking in the right area you know jump on and have a look at our um, our chart here make sure that you're going for a job in the production mining side of things in this um, column here because this is where the long-term work is this is where the full-time work is and this is where you're going to get your mining career out of if you start over here 
chances are you're going to get stuck over here. Um, people do make the jump, but it's, you know, you can, I can sort of count on one hand the amount of people I've seen do it over the journey. Um, it's really hard to do. If you've done it, then, you know, congratulations, you've done it. You're the exception to the rule. You're not the rule. Um, yeah, if you jump in in this area, that's where you're probably going to get stuck. If you are in this area and you want to make the jump, educate yourself. Do the DIY package. Um, $495, learn how it all works make the jump across it makes it a lot easier you won't be able to make the jump across on the mine site that you're on you'll have to go to a different mine site but it's you know it'll be pretty easy for you to make the jump across so i hope you found that information helpful i'm um, sorry there wasn't a video last week i've had a few family issues going on around the place um, which so it might be a bit hit and miss with videos moving forward for the next couple of weeks but um, yeah if you could share this video around and like and subscribe the channel thanks